My very dear brothers and sisters, or let me say boys and girls, we have a special opportunity to be together, and our gathering is based upon the promise of the Lord Jesus that the Father and Him would come to us and sup with us. Our Heavenly Father has chosen us and knew us before the foundation of this earth was laid. He had also his son with him before the foundation of this earth was laid. But our heavenly father, he had in his plan, he had in his plan decided that he would want to have a family. And this family comes out of him. That constitutes a family. And for this reason, he had an awful work to do. First of all, man got lost unto him when Adam disappointed him. And when man got lost into him, man took along God's own investment, which he laid into him, the immortal soul. And so our Heavenly Father, he had no other choice but to bring a ransom, and only his son could do that, in order to satisfy his own righteousness. And when his own righteousness was satisfied by the earning of Christ, then our Heavenly Father could, offer, could, could operate. And for this operation, he needed men. For this operation, he had called men from the beginning, he had called him. He made the wife out of the man to help him, to be around him. He made everything from the earth. Even man was made out of the earth, but not a woman. But the woman was made to accompany and support the man whom our Heavenly Father had chosen through whom he would do a work which he, would uh, which he would introduce unto him. This cause for which the Lord Jesus was born was laid into him while he was a young boy. He even disappointed his mother when they looked for him, for him amongst the gossipers for three days. He came back to the temple and met him in the temple. And he said, Mother, wish ye not that I must be in my father's business? He was not interested, not even in the interest of his mother. He was not interested in what goes on in this world because he was aware of the fact for which he was born. And he was aware of the fact that he came from the Father and was the Son of God. And thereby he gave to his Father and to his calling first place in his operation. First place. Even his mother had forgotten that she became pregnant Without physical contact of a man, she was the, the only exception in 6,000 years. She muddled around in their daily operation, in their daily plans, because she had some more children. But the Lord Jesus, he was always, he always concentrated. He concentrated to his commission. And he was a young man amongst all young people. They had young people that time too. But he was all on his own with his father. He was a clinger in his conversation with his father. He drew the life upon himself. And by this life, he became an overcomer. By this life, he did not disappoint his father. Neither did he, did he disappoint the righteousness of our Heavenly Father. In this work, 
He was active. He brought it to the chosen people. They accepted him not. Why didn't Jerusalem and why didn't the scribes and the Pharisees, why didn't they accept him? Because they, by accepting him, they had to put their will under his will. That was the law. They had to be and show unconditional, unconditional obedience of faith. And this deprived them of their own liberty which they had on earth. That was the reason. That was the reason with everyone whom our Heavenly Father weeded out or denied out of his calling. So my dear brothers and sisters, young people, we don't only speak to the young people today. The service is televised all over North America. We do not only speak to the 17-year-old, we speak also to the 75 years old. We are all in the same, if I may put it that way, in the same category. We don't want to fail. That is the main thing in our life. That is, that is what followed me up for over a half a century, over 50 years, not to fail. When we joined this church with my wife, we were just like you young people. I was 20, 23, she was 19. We had all inclinations, we had all our friends. I had my parents at home whom I vowed faithfully to go back again to Transylvania where I came from. That all went into the gutter because the reason for which our Heavenly Father had established his church and for which he had chosen us that went not into my, only into my head as went through my body, into my toes and that followed me up day and night and whatever the price had to be that had to be paid the neighbor didn't pay this price for me my father and mother didn't pay that price for me so was it also with our heavenly father. He could not pay the price for his son to show unconditional obedience of faith, not to flirt with the opportunity which the world offered unto him. He had to pay this price. And he was highly and greatly rewarded for it. He didn't ask his father while he was on earth, what will I get for it? Only the, dis the disciples, they asked for it. But his father, when he came to his father, as he who had not disappointed his father, his father gave him everything. Even the last judgment that will come into being at the end of the thousand year kingdom of peace, the father has disengaged himself from it and has given it to, to the son. So my dear brothers and sisters, is your life and our life is still ahead of us. Whether my years or maybe one or 10% of yours is beside the point. We all are admonished what the future holds in store for us. For us, according to our decision, according to our, the expression of our will, because our will stands above everything. God has made, <clears throat> he, has, he has made us freelancers, if I may put that way, 